We're going to move on now with a look through the international press. Flo is back for that. Hello there. Again. Let's start off uh, with a story that's uh, really evolving with every minute, uh, grabbing a lot of headlines around the world too. Uh, the death of this senior Palestinian cabinet official, uh, Ziad Abu Ain. That's right. It's getting a lot of attention across the world. It's the main topic in the independence uh, international section today. They talk about the death of a Palestinian leader. And there's a, a screen grab there from this video uh, that we've been seeing where you can see him scuffling with an Israeli soldier. Minutes later, he was dead, apparently struck by, while Israeli troops uh, were breaking up this protest that he was leading. But of course, there have been very conflicting reports about his autopsy. What we do know, though, and this is what The Independent points out in this article, is that he's the highest ranking Palestinian to die in confrontation with Israeli forces. And this article points out that his death uh, is really inflaming an already very tense situation. And Lorient Le Jour, the Lebanese paper, says the exact same thing on their front page today. They say there's a risk of escalation of violence. They say that uh, he was killed by Israel, so they take a very firm uh, position there. Of course, this is a Lebanese paper. Jerusalem Post, meanwhile, so uh, an Israeli paper, wonders, who is this man? Who is Ziad Abu Ain? Well, they point out that he's the former deputy minister for prisoner affairs. He himself spent several years in Israeli prisons for uh, his role in a, a 1979 terrorist attack, according to this article, which killed two uh, Israelis. He fled to the United States following this attack, and actually he was the very first Palestinian to ever be extradited from the U.S. to Israel. Uh, now, Arab papers are also uh, focusing on his death. Al-Quds al-Arabi, so that's a pan-Arab paper based in London, says his death is a war crime. Uh, and they say that, after all, he was leading a peaceful demonstration against Israel's illegal settlements. This is, of course, the position of this Arab paper. Exactly. A lot of uh, positions coming out. And uh, this morning we have been hearing that there are disputes over the autopsy results, uh, whether he was killed by inhaling tear gas or whether it was a simple heart attack brought on by stress. Um, plenty more to come out of that story, I'm sure. Uh, let's move on with the fallout of this U.S. Senate report on the CIA's uh, interrogation uh, program, use of torture uh, in the years following the September 11 attacks. That's right. It's still very much the leading topic across the world. Uh, I've pulled out some examples from various papers across the world. Uh, China Daily, uh, interestingly, doesn't have the best track record when it comes to human rights issues. Uh, this is their uh, cartoon today. Uh, they're talking, of course, about this torture report that it is waterboarding the CIA, so having a very negative effect there on the CIA's reputation. Gulf News, the uh, United Arab Emirates paper, agrees in their editorial. They say this report has really blighted uh, America's image. If the U.S. has to regain its moral ground, then it must prosecute those behind such inhumane acts. So that's the editorial of Gulf News. The U.S. media, of course, is still following this topic very much. I've pulled out a, a cartoon from uh, the Washington Post, Tom Toll's cartoon. Uh, he's pointing out how damaging this is for the United States. You can see Uncle Sam there uh, in a torture position, very similar to those used by U.S. soldiers at uh, Abu Ghraib prison. Uh, and you can see that commentator there saying he did that to himself. Very stark images there. And, of course, this report was based on more than six million pages of documents. They were working on it for, for many years, and uh, the, the findings do seem to have been deemed uh, credible by uh, authorities over in the United States. But there are a lot of critics still coming out of the woodwork. Now, are they criticising what's in the report or how it was made or the fact that it was published at all? It's a, it's a mix of uh, what the content of the report is and who carried out the report as well. On the front page of The Independent, you'll find one man, Dr. James Mitchell. He's a psychologist who was one of the architects of this uh, interrogation program. Uh, his firm was paid $81 million by the CIA to interrogate uh, al-Qaeda prisoners. Now, uh, he calls the torture report a load of hooey, uh, and he says that the findings were biased and selectively produced, and that is exactly what the Wall Street Journal agrees with today. They're very critical of the Senate Democrats who carried out this report. You can see here, uh, this editorial calls them the spooks of the Senate. Uh, the report on the CIA interrogations is a collection of partisan second-guessing. Essentially, what this article says is it's very easy to criticize what the CIA did today, but it's important to remember the context the, uh, just after the 9-11 attacks in which this program was set up. 
Okay, and very briefly, uh, there's uh, a mention of human rights abuses being unveiled in Brazil as well. It's very interesting. This is a report that came out the day after the U.S. report, and uh, you can read about it in the New York Times. You can see a photo there of President Dilma Rousseff, herself a victim of torture, uh, and she was uh, crying as she presented this report. This is a report by a truth commission into the atrocities committed during the country's military dictatorship, so from 1964 uh, to 1985, which What's interesting is that unlike the U.S. report, it identifies those responsible for the violations and calls for the criminal prosecution. Very interesting indeed. That can be, we can read about that in the New York Times. Thanks very much. Flo Villamino there with a look through the international papers of the day.